I'm Jacob from WARM. As we know, whenever it comes to figuring out how much energy our homes use, it always comes down to three factors, which we call the energy equation. Those three factors are the house shell, the house systems, and the occupant behavior. This time, we're going to take a look at the house systems, which means the appliances or equipment inside your home. Here in Michigan, things get cold. In fact, heating costs are the biggest part of annual utility bills in most U.S. homes. What simple, low-cost things can we do to improve our heating systems and lower those costs? What can we do to make sure that you're maintaining your heating system properly? Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations. After that, a good first step is to change the filter on the furnace three to four times a year. By changing the filter regularly, we're going to keep dust out of the inside of the furnace. If the inside gets all covered up in dust, it's like it's wearing a jacket and it can't let the heat off. But we want it to let that heat out to get up to the rest of the house where you need it. Also, by changing the filter, you're going to keep the air cleaner inside your house. I often just keep a box of these nearby so they're easy to switch in and switch out whenever you need to, three to four times a year. For homes with a boiler instead of a furnace, be sure to drain and replace the water in the boiler three to four times a year. Otherwise, you spend money heating up rust instead of water. The next simple step is to make sure that we are efficiently distributing the heat through your house. For example, let's take a look at the basement. A lot of people use their basement as a living space, and in that case you want to keep the basement heated. But a lot of people use it as storage space, and if that's the case, you don't need to be pouring a lot of heat into the basement. But take a look at this vent up here. Some of the hottest air coming out of the furnace is going to come down into the basement before it ever continues on upstairs where you actually need the heat. If you want to take care of that, just close the vent. Close those vents in the places you don't need the heat and let the heat travel where you need it. Just keep an eye on the basement temperature to make sure it won't get so cold that your pipes freeze. Make sure that you've checked for drafts and other places the cold could get in. Similarly, if you have a spare room or a bedroom you're not using, shut the vents in that room and shut the door to that room. The smaller the space you're trying to heat, the less gas you have to burn to heat it. So the biggest natural gas user in your home is the heating system. But after that, the next big energy hog, your water tank. And if you're heating your water with electricity, it costs even more money. Even with natural gas prices rising recently, it's always more expensive to heat with electricity than with gas. And that holds true for your stove, your dryer, or your water tank. Down at the bottom of your hot water tank, you'll find this control box with a dial on it. A lot of people assume that that's something for the plumber or a heating technician, and they won't touch it. But it's actually there for you, the person who lives in the home, and it allows you to adjust the temperature of your water. A lot of people just automatically have it cranked up to the top. And if that's the case, you'll probably have this experience. You turn on your hot water faucet, and the water starts cool or warm, then it gets hot. And then gets so hot that you have to crank up the cold water just to use it. If that's the case, then you're wasting money to make the water hotter than you can use. Also, at the top temperature, most water heaters keep the water around 160 degrees, which is scalding. Water this hot can be very dangerous, especially to children and seniors. Turn down the dial on your water heater. Different heaters have different dial markings. Look for a notch that shows the factory recommended setting. Otherwise, you can just turn it down to the middle. You can always adjust the temperature from there as you need to. Ideally, you'll be able to turn on your hot water tap and just use the water without having to add a lot of cold water. Most homes would benefit from adding low flow shower heads that only use 1.5 gallons per minute, but also provide an excellent shower. This will save your energy bill by keeping that water heating cost down 
and it'll save your water bill, too. If you go out of town for several days, then turn the tank down to its lowest setting. That way you're not spending money to heat up water that no one needs. When you get home, turn it back up to that middle setting, and soon you'll be ready to run with hot water again. Heating and hot water combined make up the majority of a home's energy use, which means this is a high priority for savings. So get working on those systems today and make sure they're working for you, not against you.